Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. I'm the gerbil, also known as Mr. Sutton. I teach design, and today I want to share with you a video about how to prepare your Adobe Illustrator files for laser cutting. Whether you're using a professional CO2 laser or something smaller at home like a Glowforge, the tips in this video are going to work for you almost no matter what. Before we get started, we have to understand how does a laser cut through something? Well, it does so by combusting, by superheating the material and burning its way through. You can also choose not to burn all the way through by just engraving or scarring the surface of your material still with the laser, and you do so by adjusting the laser's power and speed. Unfortunately, that picture's not turning out as well as I hoped, but we can cut clear through a material with a slow laser moving with a high power, or we can reduce the power or speed up the movement of the laser so that it doesn't have time or the energy needed to go clear through the material, at which point it will engrave it. We can also make lots of passes back and forth, slowly working our way across the material to scan the image or an image or text into the surface of a material. Now this was meant to be a, a screen of light burn, apologies, you can't see it well, but in most apps, whether you're using RDWorks, as shown in this screenshot here, or Lightburn, you can typically adjust the power and speed of a laser and change a variety of options to get either a, a line or a scan effect. Now, in my grade seven classes, we are currently designing and preparing to laser cut some USB night lights. And we can see here that each of these have areas where the laser has engraved artwork on the material or it has cut clear through the material. And here's an example that I've been building with my students in class where it has three layers cut all the way through and then the backboard with a Christian prayer engraved onto the back of it. Now, how do we know when we're ready to do that? What I'm going to instruct my students to, and what I would recommend you do as well, is start by telling your students to remove all the fill colors. In fact, you may want to design it without any fill colors. Then you want to use just the stroke to help your students indicate or label what colors you want or what settings you want. If you want something to cut clear through a material, I recommend just using a black. If you want to engrave <clears throat> some artwork on the front of a material, like the, the picture I showed before, then maybe go for a blue. And then for a red, something that's gonna be filled in and scanned, go with the red. Now, you can change that, of course, in whatever app you're running. And you can generally customize that. And if your software is pretty recent, it can open up the Illustrator file and color code the settings you use on the strokes here to the settings <clears throat> that you've preloaded in your app. So for my students and my classes, we're going to, again, black stroke means to cut clear through. Blue means to engrave lightly on the material. And then red would be to scan to fill in. So now comes the preparing part. Is this graphic ready for laser cutting? Step one, remove the fills. So I select everything, and when I do that, I immediately see pads overlapping, and I know we have a problem, Scooby-Doo. Why do we have a problem? Because everywhere we see a path, the laser is going to want to cut that, or, or the laser is going to uh, travel along that path and burn some way. And so everywhere we have an overlapping path, we risk having these things cut clear through. And if you really wanna see what that looks like, in the view menu at the top of the screen, the second option is says to show outlines or command Y. That is going to show you what the laser is gonna see, not what we young artists or professional artists may see. So now when we go to that, that view outline, we can now see how the arms, the head, the pieces, the legs, and the table are all overlapping. So you can imagine the laser following this rectangle, cutting it out, then following this rectangle, cutting it out, then following the top of it, cutting it out. We don't have one table. We end up having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different pieces of wood or plastic or whatever that fall to the ground worthless. So we have to 
Start by defining all the outer edges of those shapes. Just like over here, we have these, these layers completely cut out of the material. We have to define the outer edges. Then we want to add the artwork we want engraved or scanned on top of it. So coming back over here to this example, what I've done is I've set my, my fill colors to white, which isn't gonna matter. If we actually get rid of those fill colors, we can see this gets a little bit easier. We can see those strokes now overlapping. And I'm gonna leave them all a black stroke. I have to think though, what do I want scanned? Well, I want the face scanned. I want the star scanned. I want the belt scanned. So I'm actually gonna pull that out of my way for a second. I'm gonna like actually move that out of the way and I'm gonna go ahead and label that with a red stroke because that is what I want to happen right there. That's gonna get scanned. The rest of this needs to just be the outline shapes. So I'm going to select all of these pieces and I'm gonna to go to my Pathfinder. And in the Pathfinder, I'm going to just unite those. And we could do this a couple of different ways. We could use the Shape Builder tool. If you select everything here, the Shape Builder tool will do the same thing. So we can say, you know what? Unite all that and unite all that. Right? And now I can see I have the completed outline and I have the artwork I want scanned on top of it. At this point, I can go ahead and move that back where I had it. There we go. Now, what about the text? See, text doesn't actually laser cut because it's not a shape. There's no vector lines, no paths defining it. So we have to convert the text into a path, a, a collection of objects. So we select our text, then we go to the type menu and we go down to say create outlines. When we do that, we can now see all the anchor points that define these letters. And of course we can edit them however we want, just like you could any other shape. But now that it is a collection of paths, we can now select our, our wood or acrylic or whatever, and we can now pathfind unite that together. And you see here now, when I go back to see the outlines, there are no overlapping pathways that are gonna cut this all up into small pieces. So let's turn that off, go back to preview. And now, voila, our product is ready. This is what it needs to look like. And if I undo it all, we can see what we started with. This was not ready for laser cutting. This is ready for laser cutting. You may be saying, hey, but Mr. Sutton, Gerbil, what about the edge here? I wanna see the curve of the neckline, no problem. We just make sure we take away our fill color and that we add our red or blue for our stroke. And then we will go and draw whatever we want the laser to draw. So I'm just gonna draw a nice little curve. And there we have it, the chin line. Now, let's walk through that one more time. Example number two. I wanna cut out this cloud sign to put on a room just called the cloud room. I've made it up, I don't know where it is. Maybe it's a hotel, maybe it's your home, I don't know. If I go cut this right now, am I indeed going to have a cloud shaped material, wood, acrylic, felt, or am I gonna have a lot of pieces? Well, let's go view, outline. Turns out I'm gonna have a lot of pieces. I need to merge all this stuff together. So I select everything except for my text. I do not want the text selected. One way you can guarantee that, of course, is to just you know move it off your page, your picture for a moment. I select everything. I could again Pathfind Unite, or if I really like to draw, I could go get my Shape Builder tool right here, and I can you know have fun, connect the dots, la 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 la. But that takes a little while, and it's easy to miss stuff. But there it is. Now I gotta put my text back on. No problemo. Now at this point again, remember text doesn't laser cut, so we have to go to our Type menu, Create Outlines, and now we are ready to laser cut this. Again, with my classroom, my laser's configured so that black will be a slow, high, high power to cut through the material. That means the cloud room A12 letters are gonna get cut out. I don't want that. I want that just engraved. So for my classroom, I'm gonna set the stroke to blue and I'm gonna set the, there it is. I'm gonna set the stroke to blue and I'm gonna set the uh, the cloud stroke to black. And if you can't see that, I promise it is indeed blue. 
But this way, when I transfer it to my laser, the laser will know to engrave the blue part, but cut clear through the black. And again, that's based on power and speed. And again, if I want this to be scanned, I will change my stroke to red. All right. Well, folks, I hope that helps. Key takeaways, remember, you need to define the outside edges first. It needs to be united into one or as many shapes as you want to cut. Then you want to go back and add any of your artwork and detail on top of it. All right. Thank you for watching. Please push that like button if it was helpful, and I'll see you later in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.